are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. The best IELTS writing task one structure. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to build the structure or how to structure your IELTS general writing task one answer. And we've got about eight points. First, we're going to look at the types of letters you're going to write with example questions. Then we're going to look at the structure. We will then look at the salutations. Then we look at the importance of white space. And then there's just four more parts. There's the body paragraphs, the summaries and endings. Uh, We'll look at some example questions with the answers and summarizing sentences. This tutorial is going to help you grasp the main elements that you should include in your GT writing task one answer. And along the way, I'm going to give you some, a few tips and advice and insider knowledge, I guess you could say, um, as to how best to prepare for this. As you've heard as well, we've got lots of examples um, because basically examples are a fantastic way to really understand what's going on. Now, if you are at home, if you are in lockdown because of the uh, coronavirus, then it's probably interesting for you to know It's probably worthwhile that you know that now if you get the online course, there are $50 discount coupons because we recognized that a lot of our students are now at home. So it's a good time to invest in yourself, take advantage of this situation. As I said in the previous podcast, it's up to us to turn every disadvantage into an advantage. One of the ways we can do this is recognize now our study time available has increased significantly. So, yeah, we're giving away $50 uh, coupons, which you can use against the online course, which includes a general task one. Also, we've launched an IELTS forum and you can join there, ask questions and I'll be responding. Daphne is responding. Um, Ellen might be as well. And also, because of this corona crisis, and we don't know how long it's going to um, how long it's going to continue, what we've done is if you buy your course now, you've got till December. Normally, it's like a hundred day access or ninety day access. Now you've got till December. Okay, so it's just it's just one way that we can all help each other in getting through this and making the most of the situation because that's exactly what we want to be doing. We want to turn this disadvantage into an advantage. Let's jump into it. So as as you heard, we're going to be looking at, first we're going to be looking at the, basically the features of the general training writing task one. So it's 20 minutes long, probably you know, probably definitely accounts for about 30% of your entire writing score. There's basically three types. It's going to be either informal, neutral, or formal. If it's an informal letter, then it's going to be to a person that you know probably quite well. You're on a first name basis. Some sample questions include thanking a friend or a colleague, providing information to a family member, inviting a friend to a summer holiday, or asking for advice from a friend, from a family member, from a colleague. And the important thing here is if you are on a first name basis with this person, then it's going to really um, influence how you write the letter. And we'll give you examples about this in a second. Then we've got a neutral or formal letter. This is going to be someone that you may have met once, that maybe you don't know them that well, and you'll probably address them by their last name. 
Example, example letters. You could be writing a letter of complaint to your landlord. You could be writing a letter, a suggestion, or giving a suggestion to your manager at work. Yep. Or it could even be a um, making a request to a neighbor, of course. But that would be more neutral rather than formal. Then the final one we've got is a formal letter. And this is a letter to a person that you've never met. You do not know their name. This is why we use Dear Sir or Madam. And in this instance, we'll probably be possibly applying for a job, uh, writing a letter of apology. Yeah, For example, I don't know, what, explaining why you missed a college exam. Or you could be writing one of the famous letters of complaint about a poor quality or service you experienced. Now, if it's, if it's formal, if it's neutral, or if it's informal, either way, you've either, whichever one it is, you've definitely got to structure your letter and write it in the most efficient manner possible. Okay, especially the neutral and the formal ones. And now I've seen letters or, for example, in the online course, we've got a general writing task one task, which a student, which the students have to write. And it's about explaining your absence from the college, uh, from a college exam. And I saw plenty of letters where the student would really go off, off, off topic and talk um, about why they couldn't go there, but they were, they went really into pinpoint detail about this illness that they had, and they explained the whole story. When really all they had to say was, "I had dengue fever," you know. But it, they really wrote out the whole drama. I had dengue fever. I couldn't get out of my bed, so that means that I couldn't reach for uh, my mobile phone, and I was too sick to to find a computer. Blah 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 blah. All they had to say was that I was bed bound and I had dengue, dengue fever. So just be careful here that the structure um, is insanely important and it is definitely worth planning beforehand. But we're going to get to that. So let's just have a look at your general structure anyway. We're going to off. We're going to start with a salutation, of course, depending on the recipient. Um, this will determine how we open. Is it going to be higher? Is it going to be hey? Is it going to be dear? Is it going to be uh, dear sir or madam? Okay. Then we're probably going to put the purpose of our writing. Okay. Could is this vary slightly differently if it is a an informal letter, which we'll get to in a second. Then we've got our body paragraphs. Body paragraph one to explain the situation, outline the problem. Body paragraph two, probably offer a solution or suggest desirable action. Then we've got a concluding sentence or a summary sentence. And then we're going to say a farewell. And obviously this is going to change depending on who we are writing to. It's really important here that when we are structuring our general task one, that we leave uh, white space and indents. Yeah. So after our salutation, we start the next paragraph with a space of about two sentences in, and then we start writing. And then after that paragraph, we skip a line, we leave a white space, an entire white space between each paragraph. And we'll start the next paragraph with a small indent. This is, um, this is basically talking to the students who will write a one-paragraph letter. Do not do this. This, is, um, this will cost you points. It's harder to read as well. So just to summarize, um, please write this down. So if you're doing GT1, we start off with the salutation. Then we give the next paragraph is the introduction. Okay, the purpose, why we're writing. First body paragraph will explain the situation or outline the problem. 
next paragraph is going to offer solution or suggest desirable action then we've probably got a summary and then we've got a farewell best regards see you later alligator whatever <laughs> okay obviously it depends on who we're writing to let's have a look at the salutation basically the the greeting if it's an informal letter we can say dear luca dear abby or we say hi luca um as i said friend family friend family member colleague okay but you basically if you're on a first first name basis if it's a formal letter then it's going to be dear mr smith dear miss weaver and then the final one if it's a formal letter a job application then we're going to go for dear sir forward slash madam and then a comma by the way we put a comma on after the ending of all our greetings dear luca comma dear mr smith comma dear sir madam comma and then we leave a blank line and we start our new sentence about a centimeter two centimeters in we leave this indentation this is just this is just the structure this is just the process um, this is what is expected um, now when we're writing our introduction okay if it's a formal letter this is exactly what we teach on the online course we write something like I'm writing to inquire about or I am writing to express my concern about I am writing to complain about I am writing to apologize for my absence this is one of the reasons why a lot of people believe general task one is more is easier than academic task one the reason is is because you've got these copy paste sentences that you can memorize and in some parts of the exam you're going to get um you're going you could possibly lose points for memorizing sentences especially if you use them incorrectly however in this in general task one you're expected to use these phrases this is the style that we, we have to write with okay we've got these sentences we need to use them now if you're writing a neutral or a formal letter it's going to be the same dear miss weaver i'm writing to thank you for i'm writing to inform you about and so on and so forth note in both of those cases we did not use a single contraction full construction i am writing to you okay i am writing to inquire about i am writing i am writing to inform you that okay this structure is very important this style no contractions no contractions write it down in capital letters informal letters however we have um our dear luca dear james dear ben yeah it's going to be warm it's going to be friendly and we're going to use contractions here there's a slight deviation in these letters uh, we don't have to start off with we don't have to start our first sentence with i'm writing to tell you about my new marriage i'm writing to tell you about my new baby boy no we can just um this these letters resemble more a conversation okay for example we're going to use casual language and we're going to use contractions i'll give you an example we've got our sentence uh, our letter dear luca comma new line indentation i hope you and abby i hope you abby and joe are all well exclamation mark it was so wonderful to spend time with you in chicago last month it felt great to catch up with you get to know your little champ and have fun together so long so you can see here it's just touching base it's, it's called what's touching base yeah just catching up and then we go into anyway the reason i'm writing is that i have some good news yeah so it's not as efficient as a formal or neutral letter you're just touching base this is your friend or family member um so just bear this in mind also hopefully you'll have heard they were there were contractions there 
and they were the language was much less f formal we're talking about little champ instead of your adolescent offspring <laughs> okay <laughs> so just bear that in mind um also even though we are writing more casual and even though it's m closer to a more spoken structure we are still going to use proper punctuation so just keep that in mind let's have a look at the body paragraphs so as i said um it needs to be broken up if you just write a lump of text and there's no paragraphs there you're going to lose points so the first body paragraph we explain the situation or outline the problem then the next body paragraph we offer a solution or suggest desirable action now what's beautiful about this is that you will answer or structure your letter following the question prompts okay it could not be easier so if we've got an informal letter to write and it says something like a friend is considering buying a house uh, write a letter to your friend advising them not to move into this neighborhood recommend that your friend doesn't go ahead and doesn't buy it um, give reasons behind your decision and suggest possible alternative areas that you know all right if we get this then we can basically just dedicate a paragraph to each of those bullet points so number one we're going to advise our friend not to go ahead with the purchase body paragraph two we will explain why they shouldn't and then in the final paragraph we will explain why um, we will explain alternatives we are going to follow the structure if we do this we're going to get maximum points for task response and it's also just going to make our essay uh, our letter in incredibly more coherent because the question prompts we get um, obviously follow a logical structure as well and we do this exact same we use this exact same strategy for a formal letter for a neutral letter sorry and for a formal letter yeah so if we've we got the question prompt um we've recently attended a professional course write a thank you letter in the letter you should include what the course was about explain why the course was helpful and suggest other co-workers should attend the course what do we do here well we first of all we get the salutation right dear mr smith for example um i'm writing this letter to thank you yeah and then we can jump into it what was it about the course we attended in massachusetts and if you can spell that you're going to get points <laughs> massachusetts anyway the course um the course we attended in manchester was truly an eye-opening experience we managed to learn about operational efficiency uh, safety in the workplace and this is just a good opportunity to squeeze in some vocabulary as well okay um that's the whole paragraph probably a few uh, one or two sentences more next paragraph following the bullet point it was really helpful because if you see the why in a question in a question prompt then you're probably going to need to uh, reply with because yeah it was extremely useful for my career because and we just go into details there and ideally pack it with vocabulary as well i do feel i'll be able to handle work conflicts much more effectively and also i think i vastly improved the quality of my network uh, which is going to undoubtedly help the company in the long run okay and then the final question prompt is suggest other co-workers who should attend the course okay or suggest two other co-workers they should attend the course and this we're going to say i think this would be this would be an extremely useful course for the accounting department for the marketing department and most definitely the production department okay just a sentence off the top of my head um and then remember the um sort of like the final part we're going to talk about um sorry the the ending best regards so and so forth okay by the way in your informal letter a ps is totally fine yeah 
So all the best. Uh, take care. Hope to see you soon. Exclamation mark. Ben. P.S. Give that. Give your dog a good warm cuddle from me. Yeah. I give your give your dog give your cat a warm cuddle from me. Smiley face. It's just more realistic, you know. And everybody reads the P.S. Summarizing sentence. Um, this is a really good piece of advice. And this is what we're going to add into the new GT Task 1 course. It's just going to wrap up your letter and it's just going to pull it all together. Okay? Um, it's just a, a feeling of, it gives, it lends the letter a feeling of closure and adds like a logical ending. Okay? So in the informal letter, we could say something like, thanks again for the trust you showed in my opinion. Yeah? Um, notice here that we're not going to say th uh, thank you again because thanks is fine. And also, we're going to follow the same rules as we started out with. We'll be using um, contractions. It's going to resemble more like more spoken English than written English. But don't overdo it here. Yeah, don't start writing like uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see you in the summer. Can't wait to get smashed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do not do that. Do not write that. It is still an IELTS exam at the end of the day. Yeah. So, um, looking forward to seeing you. Um, can't wait to have another game of chess. Okay. That's much, much better, obviously. And, yeah, when we are, uh, and for our uh, neutral letter and for the formal letter we're going to do the same we're just going to wrap it up and add that sense of closure to the sent to the letter now the farewell is quite easy as well if we've got a formal letter we're going to go for yours faithfully and then the full name ben worthington yours faithfully new line ben worthington a neutral letter we can go with yours sincerely Full name, Ben Worthington. An informal letter, we can just say, um, all the best, best regards, warm wishes, hugs uh, hugs and kisses, you know. Be careful though, don't get these mixed up. You don't want to write a letter to your manager and finish it with hugs and kisses, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, um, at the end, you just put, I'll, in my case, I would just put Ben. And I'm going to put Ben Worthington, you know. If it's a letter to my mum, <laughs> I put Ben Worthington. Should be a little bit worried. Um, now, after you've finished, um, yeah, especially for the uh, formal and the neutral letters, we don't write anything else. Okay? Um, with the informal one, a PS cannot hurt. Okay? But just remember, for the neutral ones and the formal ones, um, it's not necessary. Keep, that's when we end all right that's everything from me in this tutorial remember if you want to really improve as well with your general writing task one remember to look at those phrases a few off the top of my head include um, if you have any further questions don't hesitate to contact me yeah or you can find my contact details overleaf attached um yeah, you can find my contact details attached in the next sheet. Yeah. Um, please don't hesitate to contact me between the hours of 7 and 10, Monday to Friday. Um, I'm writing to complain about the recent development with the roads. I'm writing to apply for the job I saw um, on the Monster website, April 2nd, um, 2020. Okay, so just keep in mind that a good memorization of these sentences, these types of sentences, is also going to be helpful. Now, just a few more things before we finish. Uh, related to Corona, there's basically no escaping. Even though you're listening to an IELTS podcast, you're still going to get um, exposed to Corona. In an auditory sense, obviously you can't catch the virus listening to this podcast. So anyway, what I want to say is that if you are in lockdown, make the most of it. 
you know, just turn this lemon into lemonade, as the Americans say. Make the best of this situation. And personally, I've been in lockdown now for about two weeks. And what's working for me personally is just having a structure and a plan. If I don't have a structure and a plan, it I can quickly lose the day, you know, and it's not healthy and you don't feel good if you're losing the day. But if you've got a structure, you've got a list of tasks that you want to get through, then it's going to be much easier. And by the way, um, I've said this before, but it's related to systems and goals. We may have the goal of getting a band seven. We may have the goal of getting to Canada or getting to England. But the goal isn't what is going to get you there. It's the system behind the goal. What are you going to do every day in order to get that goal? There's a really interesting story about a famous golfer who was so obsessed with his system and he was in a final like grandmaster's competition and he was so obsessed with this system of his golfing and that's all he concentrated on he wasn't thinking about the grand prize he wasn't thinking about how many puts or how many shots he has to take until he's finished he was just focusing on getting each um put perfect And he was on the final one and he made the shot and he won the competition and he had no idea that that was the final one. So this just shows the level of um, the, the level we want to meet with our system. This is what's going to get us the results. And this is why the online course is is exactly this. It's a system for you to follow and gives you structure. So if you're a little bit lost, a little bit worried and a little bit, I don't know, anxious about structuring and about uh, getting a system in place in order to improve your score, then maybe the online course is going to help you and it's going to lend itself, it's going to give you a structure as to what to do each day and how to do it. Also, in a previous podcast, uh, we talked about the coronavirus and a list of actions you can take that you can fit into your system and probably talking more about this uh, in future episodes so that's it from me today i hope you have a fantastic day make the most of this situation how can you turn it to your advantage that's it if you need some more ielts materials then go to ielts podcast forward slash uh, ielspodcast.com forward slash sign and you can get a free ebook there with some sample essays with some vocabulary lists and all of that as you know we've got forum.ieltspodcast.com up and running we've also got um uh, yeah the youtube channels and remember if you know anybody who's struggling with their ielts scores um then get in contact and we can help you. Take care and keep moving forward. Bye-bye. IELTSPodcast.com